Joe, uh, you, you know, we really have made some parents really upset. <laughs> I get they the are, calls. <laughs> I know you do. They are aggravated about <laughs> the fact that now, not only do we ask them to come in, bring six weeks of pay stubs, bring proof of birth, immunizations, but now we're saying, oh, and by the way, you have to come back. So they're not happy, Joe. Absolutely not. Maybe it would help if we talked about what happened the first meeting and why the second one's so important. You think we could make them happier? <laughs> well, we can enlighten them. How about that? That's a good, How about them? How about it, guys? But give us a chance to see if we can help you really understand what we're trying to do. Joe, the first meeting is about what? Well, for, first and foremost, if, yeah. if we could get the parents to recognize that Everything we do is geared toward the enhancement of the success really of the family. Right. And what we'd been noticing was when we had families that would come in for the very first appointment, it may last an hour and a half and two hours. After the first 30 minutes and that parent yeah. realized that they were eligible to receive services, they'd gotten their paperwork to take to the provider, the brain shut down. There was yeah. no more information yeah. <laughs> that you they were heard. Done, just done, ready <laughs> so, to go get a cup of coffee. Then we would get these challenges uh, down the road, where as a parent would miss their appointments, they would uh, not pay their co-pay, and we would bring the parent and say, "Well, what happened? You signed the terms and condition that said you were briefed on this, and what we heard was." I signed it, but I don't remember anything. I, I didn't hear, no, I didn't I understand. Didn't and Joe, that it, as important as them, their co-pay and their attendance policy, the other thing that they missed was they didn't know what they should expect from that provider mm -hmm. on behalf of their child. And as the parent, they are the only one who can advocate that their child receives the services their child should be receiving, the educational services right. at that program. And they just weren't getting any of it mm -hmm. until their child was on the verge of being kicked out because they weren't learning or they weren't behaving. So I, I, we kind of came up with something we thought might work. Brilliant. We think it's brilliant. <laughs> you may not think it's brilliant, <laughs> but, but we did understand that when you came in for that first meeting, really where your heart, your mind, and your energy was at was on getting a service, getting that child care, because you really needed to go to work in the morning and you had to have some place for your child. So you were signing anything without really understanding what it was. So Joe, what did we do? We split the appointments. We took the appointments and divided it. We went with the eligibility and enrollment process first. So we got that out of the way. You had the place where you were going to place your child, all of the documentation and everything was in and processed. Now the child was placed in care. Well, did that still take an hour? An hour no, no, that, that process normally takes about 30 minutes. Okay, so it's, it's, not right, 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 okay. right. All right. Yeah. Now, the second part of the uh, appointment came within 30 days, I believe, Lynn. Mm -hmm. uh, you were required to come back within 30 days, remember. Just say that word again. Required. Required in order <laughs> to keep your services. Right. You have to come back. You know, and the reason for that was that we had to finish the portion that yes. we're required to do, not only for your benefit and your child's, but for the documentation and the paperwork that we have to process and send back to the state so we can receive the funding to pay for your child That's care exactly that was right. determined in the first okay. interview uh, meeting. Um, Lynn, I I elaborate a little bit, please, if you would, on what happens in that second sure. appointment. The second appointment, Joe, is very, very different. We're really not asking for documentation. We're not asking for a lot of information as far as technical information from the parent. Really, uh, that primary purpose, which is kind of why I dress like this, Joe. How do you like this? I, 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 I like it. <laughs> My like favorite it. way to dress. But we dress like, I dress like this to remind parents that that second visit is really about shifting the focus from eligibility, getting into child care so that I can go to work, 
to understanding that while that child's in that child development center, they should be learning. It's going to look like play to you. It must look like play. But that is the work of a child. So that's okay. But what we want to be able to do is to help that parent understand that there's at least two processes that they need to be asking their provider about. Mm -hmm. Because they're not just getting, if, a, if you don't mind me saying this, Joe, daycare. Okay. Okay, uh, that's, that's not what, what these dollars are about. These dollars are called school readiness. And the purpose is not just keeping children healthy and safe so you can work, but the purpose is to ensure who is teaching your child. They're at this program 10 hours a day, five days a week. You just have enough time to get them bathed and get them fed and get them in bed. So who is helping your child learn those critical early learning foundations? It's got to be your provider. And Joe, that is so important to us that we didn't want to miss the opportunity to really help the parent to take a moment, breathe, and shift roles so that they saw themselves as that child's teacher and understood two things, Joe. First, we have that parent has to know that their child's okay. And I, I say this, Joe, because you know mm -hmm. that it was my granddaughter was 14 months old when, when we were told that she was, they thought she might be delayed. Now, I should have known better, Joe, mm -hmm. but when it's your own child, when it's your grandchild, you know, you, you just think they're late eyes, bloomers. Right. You're looking with different eyes. But, but my little Sarah, our Sarah, was not talking, not walking, had never uttered mama. And we knew in our hearts something was just not quite right. But, Joe, we couldn't, we couldn't bring ourselves to say it. And so when Sarah went to her first child care program, it really was the provider who came to us and said, we're not sure but Sarah's not yet doing some of the things the other children are. And so I learned through my own experience that it's very important for a parent to know firsthand where their child is at developmentally. And for me, Joe, it broke our hearts to have somebody else tell us. So I can only imagine. we thought how much better it would be for you as the parent if you got to do the checklist yourself, if you were able to respond and answer the questions to make sure that your child is developmentally now, now, on now this checklist, Lynn, this checklist, mm -hmm. what, 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 is, what is this checklist? It's very thing? cool, Joe. It's, a, it's, it's not threatening. It, it just is about can your child do certain things? Can they catch a ball? Can they skip? You know, Joe, it may be our... Our parents find it interesting, but one of the ways we figure out whether a child is ready to read or not, whether they're seven or four, is can they skip? You mm -hmm. think skip? Well, Joe, that's because when the child skips, it shows us that their brain can move from the left to the right, the left oh, to right. Okay. Well, what do you have to do when you read? Your brain has to be able to move left to right. So this checklist for parents, it's very friendly. It was written for parents. But what it does, Joe, is it gives them an opportunity to say where their child is at instead of somebody coming to them and saying, we think something might be wrong or your child looks wonderful. So it's the parent's right, uh -huh. but it's also the parent's responsibility. What is this gray area I keep hearing yeah, about? What does that yeah. mean? I love this ages and stages questionnaire, Joe. I, I really wish we had done it with our Sarah. Mm. Um, you never forget when somebody comes to you and says, we think something's wrong with your baby. Mm -hmm. you, you, you just never forget those words, Joe. And I never want a parent to hear those words like that. Well, this gray area, Joe, means that we think that your child is probably fine. We just need to give them some time in an enriched environment. 
you know, with other children, that we're going to kind of keep our eyes on them for about 30 days. When you say we're going to, now the child has gone to the child care center. Exactly How how do we keep on? Thank you. We actually require, Joe, we enter in to private partnership through a contract with private small businesses, those child care providers. We don't do it ourselves. We don't provide child care ourselves. We go into the community and ask child care providers, would they (coughs) like to enter into contract with us? And in that contract, it specifically states that you will make sure the children are screened and you will make sure they are assessed. Now, Joe, the screening is just a quick snapshot. It's just to make sure that the child is where they should be, that they are able to learn. But the assessment is an ongoing observation of how that child is systematically growing. So, so initially, you, you get they get a screen. You get the screen. And, and this is the ages and stages That's screening the ages that the stages. parent is directly involved parent in. Does it. Okay. Yes. Now, as we shift from the screening to the assessment, is that right. a little bit more? Kind of much more intense, Joe. Oh, okay. It's much more intense, and that is why we we don't ask that the parents do it. The assessment, the child assessment, is really very carefully observing the child to make sure that the child is learning what we are teaching. So the screening just shows us the child is developmentally on track and able to learn. For example, my Sarah, she couldn't walk yet. Mm. So we needed to put some very specific activities and strategies in place to help strengthen that. So we, we, we partner up with the child we care partner. providers. Uh, we, we, as a part of the coalition, we, we present things with the teachers yes, in the classroom. Do. Yes, okay. uh, right. it, well, and I, that's such a good point to let parents know that we actually provide specific professional staff development to teach the teachers mm-hmm. how to complete this assessment, how to put it online, how to actually pull down teaching activities that would help their child individually. And Joe, this is really what I want our parents to know. Your child and you, you deserve your child to get the very best education they can. And that, though, is really your responsibility. Now, Joe, we do, we do check it. Mm-hmm. We check to make sure that that provider is completing those child assessments. But really, parents, it's you going in and asking your provider, how'd my child do? When are the assessments? We tell them, Joe, when they should expect assessments, but really it's you that have the power. You have great power. And just you asking them, and if they can't answer you, I invite you, I encourage you, please, you call us, you call me, and I will make sure that we get involved and check to see why your child is not getting what they deserve and what that private provider said they would do. It's so important, Joe. I I can't tell you how important. I, I hope sharing some of my personal experience helps you to understand. I know where you sit sometimes. I know that sometimes you wonder, well, he he doesn't seem to be doing what the neighbor's children are doing. And some of that shows perfectly natural. Mm -hmm. Children all grow and develop at their own rate. But there are times that children might need some additional help in order to bring them up to speed. And that's when We want to make sure you as the parent have the support you need. So, Joe, really, those child screenings and those child assessments, that's what that second appointment is about. And let me me just make sure we're clear on this. So on that that second appointment, we're looking at the the parent, uh, you know what I mean, we're working with... uh, parent enrichment we are. programs. We are. We're looking at screenings and then we revolve from that, evolve from that into when the child's in the child care center. So the partnership now includes us, right. the parent, and the child care. And that private. So we have a three owner. four yes, we do. 
hard at this point in time to support that family. So it is a partnership from in, in the, the door sense of the to word. out yes. Yes. the door. Okay. With one goal. And what's that? That that child grows to be that beautiful gift that God meant for them to be. I, I have another question for you. You have a granddaughter by the name of Sarah. That's, I that's, do. How old is Sarah now? Sarah's 12. My granddaughter name is Sarah as well. Yes. She's yeah. five. Now she had a problem. And she has you wrapped around her finger. Absolutely. By the way. Absolutely. <laughs> she, her mother is concerned that she's going to be moved out of her princess role, but yes. we're working on that. <laughs> but she had a problem with her vision. Yes. Um, You're so right. It, it was noticed, uh, my wife, who's a, a family child care provider, she noticed it immediately when yes. there's something wrong through training, mm -hmm. observation training that she'd mm -hmm. had. Um, how, what do we do, for, mm -hmm. you know, for children as far as up? Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what your wife noticed, what Nellie noticed, was that little Sarah was having to overcompensate to see the books. Mm -hmm. And so she immediately took the grandbaby and got her vision screened. Mm -hmm. Now, Joe, you are blessed to be able to just call the doctor and take them um, to the military base. Mm -hmm. But many families are not. And so often parents have to make a choice. And I know this is a real choice. I know sometimes you have to choose to buy milk, put gas in the car, or take your child to the doctor. I, I understand that. And so the coalition, our board and the coalition, really felt like we could support you, the parent, if we actually hired a registered nurse and, and other staff. And Joe, we literally go in to the private child care providers and we screen the children's vision. We also screen for hearing. The reason the hearing screening is so important is that so often children have a sinus infection, uh, that green stuff starts running, <laughs> coming out their nose, and you know, you know your baby's sick, but what you don't know is that leftover was fluid in their ears. And it just so happened that we were covering the sounds of the letter F and the letter T and the letter P. And you must have very clear hearing to hear the differences in those sounds, Joe. And so that baby lost it. They did not hear those sounds. So we send a nurse mm -hmm. and other staff in to use very, very specific equipment. So, so we're, not, we're not standing there uh, asking this child, uh, to cover one eye oh, no, and, no. and, and oh, so no, it's no. okay. No, right. no, no, actually we are measuring. We have a tool that just has the child look. It's not invasive. It, it doesn't frighten the child for the vision. We just have it. We actually have a tool, a light that measures mm. the weight that the okay. eye is using at that point in time. We have a tool that just goes gently into their ear and immediately we know whether a child is hearing or not. Is, is there any kind of cost to the parents for there this service? absolutely no cost. There's no cost to the parent for this service. There's no cost to the provider. Now, what we do ask is that if you get a referral, mama, daddy, grandmama, if you get a referral that says, we have screened your child's vision and the they seem they referred in their left eye or we screened your child's hearing and they referred in both ears. What we are telling you is we've done all we can do, Joe. Mm -hmm. We're not doctors. Right. Uh, what all we are able to do is to tell you that based on our equipment and a registered nur nurse, your child needs to be seen by someone else. We just think it would be a good idea. Now, sometimes, Joe, we just say, eh, give us two so, weeks. So, so the flag has been, the been, flag the flag has, has been raised. Exactly We're just then informing the parent, hey, you need to take right. this child. Now, yeah. we, we, we've had some pretty good success. Some, some, oh, some Joe, I, I have to tell you, we actually had uh, a child whose parent worked at the health department. They didn't catch it. This child was legally blind. 
three years old, legally blind. But you see, you don't have to read at three, so nobody <laughs> caught it, but this equipment caught it. We have, I can't tell you how many tubes have had to be put in ears. The Lions Club and other community partners have worked with us to make sure our kids have gotten glasses. So it's really a great support to the parent. But I, I have to tell you something very sad. What's that? 50%, 50% of the parents, you, 50% of our parents, who get a referral from the coalition saying that their child's vision may not be just exactly where it should be or their hearing, 50% of the parents are saying, mm, we think they're fine. We're going to wait until they get to school. They'll screen them in school. The very sad news is, Joe, just like with your baby, did they wait to fix Sarah's eyes? No, matter of fact, they, they did a couple, they took a couple steps where she had to wear the patches for mm -hmm. a couple of months. And after that, they, it didn't work, but she it was being monitored constantly and they had to go and actually do surgery. And we were told that if they hadn't done this, the longer that we would have waited, the more serious the, the situation would have been. Now, Joe, been. what I want you to do, because what you have just said from grandpa, from mm -hmm. Papa. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at the parents. Look, look in there. Just please hear us. Joe has just shared with you about his own granddaughter who had eye surgery. And how old is Sarah? Sarah's five. Five years Perfect. old. And what did the doctor say to you again? If we had not acted, it would have been irreversible. It just would have, you know, progressively gotten worse. So you see, we really are all in this together. If you get that referral, please, parents, waiting until they get to kindergarten, as far as vision, you are going to be too late in many, many, many cases. We actually have ophthalmologists from the community that work with us and tell us that if they'd just gotten that child at three, he might have wore glasses for a couple of years, but then he would have been fine. Now he will wear glasses all of his life. I know you don't want that to happen. I know you don't mean to do that. It's life gets so busy. That's why we partner, Joe. Absolutely. That's why we send the reminders. That's why we call you and call you and call you until we can talk to you, trying to help you understand that we can't reverse this. We can't reverse it. And Joe, if they have a problem, if you can't, if you don't have the funding, if you don't have the transportation, if there's a barrier, we are here to help you. Our board, our community partners, they are here to help you because what's, in, what's absolutely important is that your child can hear and that your child can see or else they cannot learn. And so Joe, they're always behind always at a deficit and no parent wants that we're just kind of talking here and we're looking at each other and i'm going wow i really needed to hear oh, that man. again reminds us of why we do what we do and joe we've been doing this now for over 20 years together working with parents so that children have the best chance they can possibly have they're worth it and you're worth it if you have questions about these screenings or child assessments or what your provider should be providing, any questions, please check out our webpage, Early Learning Coalition of Northwest Florida, or find us on Facebook, and you'll actually get to see many of these kind of clips. But please contact us. We want to be here for you. Joe, this is why we get up every day and go to work. It keeps us young. Keeps us young. <laughs> keeps us involved.